Hello everyone and welcome back to Sonic the Hedgehog before the sequel for the PC. I'm One Wild Sheep and today we're going to take a look at this zone which a lot of people who enjoyed Sonic CD will probably like. Why? Well, it's pretty similar to Stardust Speedway in a way. It's got a similar sort of level design where you have all these ramps and basic slopes and stuff you need to traverse across. And there's a couple of um, Chemical Plant Zone flashbacks as well, so if you like Chemical Plant Zone, if you like Stardust Speedway, you'll probably like this zone. Although I have to say, the music in this zone is surprisingly tranquil. I mean, it fits with the whole theme because there's like a beautiful sunset and the background is mm, <laughs> so calming. But, um, you know, I, it's it's a nice change of pace as a pass from the normal fast-paced bump to bump to bump music. Although you, I can quite easily imagine this song being in a porno or something. I really can. <laughs> it's, uh. But anyway, yes, this stage features a couple of Bannock types in this one, which is interesting. Got these um, cogs as well that make a return from Metropolis on from Sonic 2. Um, to use them, you basically run on them, and they'll go up and down depending on which direction you're running. It's not the most difficult thing in the world. Now, these bunny Bannocks that have the spring sun from Mario Brothers. Gee, I wonder why. They're very annoying because when you go in, when you're running past, as you go near them, they'll open up a force field. Fortunately, I killed that one there, but this force field basically means you can't hurt them at all. And chances are, while you try and kill them, the force field will be up and like, ha <laughs> psych! You want to kill me, bro? You're not going to. So the best bet with these Bannocks is basically a spin dash or run underneath them. Also, you've probably seen Bannocks similar to like the wall crawlers from Chemical Plant Zone that shoot lasers. In this game, they don't shoot lasers. Instead, they act like a spring, so whenever the top of them is glowing, you can jump on them and boop up higher. It's very useful, actually. Well, it's not very useful, because you, you can quite easily... They're usually located underneath spikes. So, chances are you're gonna just jump on them and you'll be shot up into spikes. And it's, tell you the truth, it's no good. It's no good. Spikes are bad, you see. But the stage also has these pressure pad platforms. Now, these pressure pad platforms are basically pressure pad platforms. You jump on them, you stay on it for a few seconds, and then it'll act like a spring. But as you can tell, there are actually two exits to this zone, depending on which way you go. I don't think... I think you might get a different second level, depending on which one of these exits you go into, but I've never been on the top exit, so I'm not entirely sure. So this is Act 2A, so I'm, I'm assuming if you go to the top exit, you go to 2B. Or not to be. That's the question. Mm -hmm. But, um, very jazzy Sonic unleashed -y kind of music here. It reminds me so much of Empire City from Sonic Unleashed. Good zone that was, actually. I quite enjoyed that. But, the music's not going to last long, because obviously speed shoes are... Jesus Christ, look how fast you're going. Speed shows are really, really effective in this game. And those, those are the guys shooting you into spikes like I mentioned before. So, just be careful whenever getting them. Now you're on this section. This section is actually extremely tricky. Because what you have to do is you have to collect all the stars in the area. In the first area, there's five stars. In the second area of this, there's seven. And in the third area, there's ten, I believe. And you need to try and stick on these platforms as much as you can. Because as you can notice, there's cars underneath you driving past. If you get hit by those cars, it's very, very difficult to recover because the cars will either shoot you extremely high, or worse yet, they'll just they, they, they'll just keep coming so you won't be able to move. That those cars are really, really painful to take care of. So if you notice a car coming, just actually if you're on the bottom floor, not if you notice the car's coming, just mash the jump button and hope to God you don't get hit. That's the only thing I can tell you. But, there you go, seven stars, so we opened up the door for this area, and there you go, that's what happens when you get hit by the car. It's not friendly. And that's what happens when you get killed. <sighs> I think I died a couple of times in this run through, but... I, I'm not entirely sure. It's been a while since I recorded this, folks, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie. But, fortunately, just before that section, there's a checkpoint, so if you die, no, don't, you don't need a track pack... Track back? Backtrack too much. It's... Everything's right there for you. Just had to check my mic wasn't muted then. Um, 
I have a bad tendency to mute my mic while I'm recording. It's not good. So, like I said, for this section now you gotta get 10 of these stars and... Don't worry folks if this this sort of, uh, this sort of gameplay isn't your cup of tea, because I'm not a big fan of it myself. The music I like, but... This is like the only section in the entire game that I know of, where you have to go up, out your way and collect all these stars. So... Don't worry too much if you don't like it. But like I said, if you reach the bottom platform where all the cars come from, jump like a madman. You can also bounce off the cars as well, which you'll find yourself doing all the time. I don't like that star that's for there though, because all you have to do is you need time it so you walk off the platform in time so you don't get hit by the cars, and so you can make your way back up before the cars decide to go meep meep, before the cars act like Roadrunner and run you over. That's what Roadrunner does, right? Ah, Looney Tunes, that's something I haven't seen in a long time, actually. I used to love Looney Tunes, but they don't show it on TV anymore. Ah, <sighs> such a shame. Such a shame, I used to love that cartoon. Ah! Gotta hate those cars, though. But, like I said, it's only three segments of this. After the third segment, you're pretty much free to move on your way, so don't worry too much. This is probably one of the longer zones in the game, I have to say, though. Which is quite saddening, because there's not much to say about this zone. There's nothing particularly special. The zone is very bland, I must say. At least I think it is. I mean, it might be people who fans of this zone, and if they are, then more power to you. But it's just not for me. It's very... I don't know how to explain it. It's like nothing much really goes on in this zone. The background's beautiful. I have to say, the background really is beautiful, and I do like how the background sort of changes depending on where you're in the area, so... Like earlier when I was getting the stars, I was inside the stadium, and now we're like in the city center, running along, speed of sound, gotta go fast, you know, all that jazz. But we go with this Act 2A complete. And I think Act 3 is actually the most interesting of the three acts, just because it's a little bit better designed in terms of um, design, if that makes any sense. It, it, it's easy. It's better at platforming. It's a little bit more fun because you got you got a lot more springs. You got a lot more alternate pathways you can take, and of course you start things off with a nice speed burst. Uh, every good level has one of these nice speed sections. And did I just get shot over cannon? <laughs> okay, Sonic the Hedgehog taking some inspiration from uh, Mario 64 here. But um, be careful that spike enemy as well. I don't think there's any way you can actually kill the spike enemies. So. They can they can be a real menace if I if I am um, to be perfectly honest. Although the bunny bannix, like I said, spin dash as soon as you see them when they're in the air to go underneath. And that cuz that wall over there where I got hit is very strange. Cause, um, I when I was playing, I was assuming that that wall was sort of like if so it was like a wall that you just hit and then you stop moving, not like foreground object. It's, it's very rare I see issues where I think something's in the foreground when it's in the background and vice versa, but it does happen. Yeah, it's quite annoying when it does as well. But oh yeah, invincibility power. I think this is the first time in this game I've shown it off actually. So yeah, while you have this, you can basically run through everything. You're an invincible juggernaut. Not the X-Men juggernaut, although that would be freaking awesome. I want to play a Sonic game when you're playing as the X-Men juggernaut. Ah. I should email Sonic Team, see if they can get on that. But, um, <laughs> I digress. So someone on Sonic Retro has probably hacked into Sonic 1 now as I'm speaking. But, as time goes on, just continue. These little blue springs as well, you just, that you can see. Basically, the faster you go into these springs, the higher you jump. So, basically, press up and the jump button, which will do the super peel out move, which I haven't mentioned yet. Which um, is basically the move that allows you to go up maximum speed. It's even faster than a spin dash, but the problem is you're a bit more vulnerable while doing it because obviously you're not in a ball. But while you're doing the super peel outs, obviously you go much faster. And if you want to get an incredible burst of speed, that's a move to go to. I don't use it too much though because I'm a bit more of a spin dash aficionado and more of a purist with a gotta go fast, gotta crouch and be all like, well. Speaking of whoa, what's going on here? I think this is actually a glitch because I don't know why the camera zooms up like this. Um, there's no real reason for it. But anyway, special stage completed and we got our life that we lost earlier back. Thank God. 
Yeah, that's some interesting scenery here. Now, what's coming up is the next boss fight, and this next boss fight is actually... It's actually quite an interesting boss, if I do say so myself. Because, well, we're going to see it in a minute. And anybody who's played Sonic Colors might get a bit of flashback from this. That's the boss. It's a freaking huge... thing. I don't know what it is, like a giant carrier machine. So, why is this boss interesting? Well, basically, you need to um, jump up on the platforms, actually climb the ship that Eggman's piloting, and run all the way up, and um, boop him in the head. And that, this is all the boss is. It's a very simple fight. But it can be very tricky to pull off because you need to, as you're jumping, you need to watch out for cannon fire. And um, every time you hit him, the little platforms that we're jumping on, as you will see, actually flip in, which means you can't land on them a second time, so you can't get repeated hits on Eggman. So this boss fight as a whole is a bit longer than you'd expect normally, but overall, it's not too bad a fight. It's It could be worse, it could be better. But just rinse and repeat the tactic, watch out for the laser cannons. Um, as you can see, as you're jumping down, the laser cannons can clip you, which is very annoying when it happens, especially if you have low rings. So, um, there's nothing much I can say about that, because you can't really dodge them effectively, because you can't see them on the screen. Just, whenever you boop your head off of Eggman's cockpit, just keep holding forward to try and stay as middle, middle ways as possible. Because that way, you might be able to get a little combo going like I have here, where you can just land, jump back up, boop him on the head, land again, boop him on the head. And that's the boss. Simple, effective. And, oh my god, he's, he's huge. I like the background shot of him blown up because it really gives you that sense of, oh my god, I just annihilated that thing. Whoa. I like it. I like it. Anyway, what's Tails up to? So yeah, as we can tell, Sonic is now on a wanted poster, which means Sonic's got a double time, and there's Tails in the background, moving on as fast as he can to do his Tails thing. Now, th this stage is actually extremely interesting, Metro Manus, because there's a couple of gimmicks in this level that are being introduced for the very first time. For example, by here, that's a fan. You need to use Tails' flying ability to move the fan, which moves the door up the way so you can move through. And there's a lot of little things like that throughout this entire stage. And a lot of bumpers, a lot of flippers. Anybody who's a big fan of, um... Ah, oh, what's the city? The, the second zone in Sonic CD might like the bumpers in this. But this stage also returns my least favorite Bannock in the classic Sonic series, the slices. But anyway, this thing by you is a laser cannon. You need to push the switch and make sure the laser hits the little gray rectangle thing to continue open, to open the door and move on. It's not too bad, but it's, again, it can be quite interesting. So yeah, slices. Hate those things. They're not as annoying as they were in Sonic 2, though, because in Sonic 2, they they threw the slicing little pincers at you. In this one, they just sort of hover, which I prefer. These bandits by you are very annoying as well, because they sort of act like, um... I don't really... They sort of act like a roundabout sort of thing, so they'll... They basically lob their attack back and forth, back and forth. And if you miss jump, then you're getting hit. It's not cool. It's no good. I got really lucky there, though. If you're lucky enough, you can actually get, shoot the switch instantly when you arrive on the actual shooty pad to open up the doorway. So, there you go. I'm gonna take this enemy out. Now, you see this um, shield power up. You might be wondering how do you get it. Well, basically, you just jump underneath it, it'll drop the power up down. Which will allow you to boop it and gain yourself a shield. Ooh, fantastic. Mmm. But moving onwards, the stage... It's, um... This is probably around the point in the game where the stages actually go a bit more lengthy overall. I mean, difficulty-wise, it's still not bad. I, I've died a few times on here just because of stupid mistakes, like careless speed running. But overall, I won't worry too much about it. Although, you might have been wondering, um, 
there are some more gimmicks to come in this level. There's not just the fan and the laser cannons. Oh no no no. This level also, I think it's this level anyway, it have this little switch thing. That I'll explain a bit more when I get to it because it'll be easier to explain when I have a little bit of a on-screen prompt going, hey, this is a switch, you have to do XYZ on it. But anyway, here's another gimmick. Those um platforms have two sides. If you go touch certain parts of the ground, they will flip. The triangular side of the platforms will actually act as a bumper, so they'll shoot you upwards. And the flat sides will basically act like a normal platform, so you have to stand on it. You'll see me make use of those platforms a bit later on. And I went past the platforms really quick, so if you don't even know what I'm on about right now... Sorry! <laughs> Post commentary! I just love it. But, um, stage overall is nothing too big. Lots of... It's a lot of speedy tunnels. And lots of bannocks to take care of. It's, they, they really do like their slices in this. Also, a nice little attention to detail of the slices is if you run past the slicer and um, go behind them, you, they'll have a, a little panicky sprite where they'll be like, oh no, oh no, he's behind me. So yeah, these are the platforms I was on about the switch. They're very annoying if you don't know how to deal with them. It took me a few seconds actually to figure out, hmm, how do these things work? But I figured it out and it's all fine and dandy. So yeah, see those that red and blue light on the ground? Basically the red light will switch it to the bumpy pads and the blue light will switch them to the flat pads where you can just sit down, chill, relax, uh, have a cup of tea, cup of coffee, depends. Uh, tea if you're British, coffee if you're American, or if you're waking up in the morning, one or the other. But overall, it shouldn't be bad. Most of the bannocks in this zone consist of those, um, those like shark things from Hydro City zone from Sonic 2, Sonic 3 even. And they're quite easy to deal with, so don't worry too much about them. Actually, those, the, that type of enemy's been shown quite a few throughout this, this game already. I don't know, the developer really likes that type of bannock where it just sort of moves slowly towards you. Oh no, what will I do when it gets to me? I'll jump in it. <sighs> but I digress, now we are in a train station. See, I like the I like details where you're going through a city and now you're in a train station of the city and you just sort of maneuver throughout. I, I like it when games do it. I I can't stress it enough. But the music is very Mel Gear-ish? Not so much Mel well, secret agent-ish, not Mel Gear. Mel Gear. The music in the stage is really secret agent-y, so Kind of gives that feel of you're infiltrating the city. You, you're going when no tailed fox has gone before. Because chances are you got two tails. You'll probably be turned into a robot at one point. Because Eggman will be like, "Hmm, this is interesting. I will make you one of my allies." I, that sounds absolutely nothing like Eggman. I, I'm, I'm going to use that Eggman voice from now on, though. Yes. Now you all bow before Doctor Eggman. <laughs> Uh, what is wrong with me? <laughs> but like I said, just uh, rinse and repeat. We've, we've seen pretty much all the gimmicks in this zone now, apart from the one I mentioned earlier that we'll be seeing shortly in this act, I believe. So yeah, see laser cannons, shoot the lasers, Bob's your uncle. And that spring is the bane of my existence. I do not like this spring. Because I always seem to... I'm always spin dashing off the edges of things because I'm by instinct now when I play a Sonic game I'm go I'm going oh go go right but no you have to stay in the center of that platform because otherwise you'd be sent back and it's it's quite annoying now if you don't know what's happening here it's basically um, hovering platforms underneath me that are making me fly across these pits so that's probably why you hear the sound effect <laughs> God. See, Sega don't need a proper sound effects guy, just hire me. That will be good enough. But yeah, those, they basically look identical to the fans, because that's what they are. They're basically fans, but you don't have to spin them yourself. They'll send you upwards. Which can be a bit confusing, I guess, but, um, yeah. Do you know the difference? Because one will make you move and the other won't. It's no big deal. 
But yeah, this act I don't think is too long. It's not too difficult. And as you can tell, there is a Sonic icon on this town. Sonic and Spin Dash here as well. Um, I don't know what to say to that because I, I don't, I don't think you can play a Sonic in this level unless you do the level select after you beat the game. Because once you beat this game, you actually unlock a level select option, which I'll go into a bit later on. But there's Act Three cleared. I was wrong about the last gimmick that's in a different zone. So you gotta look forward to that either in one of the very one of the other three parts that's left of the series. But special stage, two extra lives in that one. So what you'll find is actually in these special stages it's actually easier to get more extra lives as the game goes on, so I don't know why they decided to do that, probably because they thought, oh the game's gonna stuck in tricky here. But I digress. You know, this boss fight by you is actually quite an interesting boss. It takes a, it, it's quite a lengthy boss to take care of, but you see the numbers 1, 2, and 3 above these switches. What you need to do is basically hit the switches in this order and hit the third one as the boss is flying over the top of the open windshield. Once he's on top of the open windshield, you will shoot a cannon at him. This cannon looks damaging as hell. But, as you can guess, this type of boss is uh, pretty slow, and be careful with Tails because it's very easy to overshoot the platform and just fly off. So, you know, just rinse and repeat this. It can take its time, it's a very tedious boss, but it's a nice change I like to feel. Every time the, every time the boss actually goes over the open sky like though, he will shoot out two or three lasers depending on how far in the boss you are. So just. Pay attention to those, wait for the perfect time to boop him with the giant cannibal. Well, I won't really classify that as a boop. For some reason, that one hit but there will always flash the screen pure white. I don't know why. Maybe it's an indicator got it's not far left of the boss. I don't know. But I think there's a couple more hits and he's going down. Overall, the boss is fairly simple. Just a bit tricky. But there we go, just boop him now, I think this is it. Yeah, we go, that's the last hit. And that's, if you, you can't see it, but Tails is actually doing his pause from Sonic 3 for that. And why is there Rice Star music playing? Okay, um, I, I don't know why there's Rice Star music playing. But, oh no, oh no, that ain't good. That is not cool. That's no good. So, with that, I'm gonna call it a part here. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you enjoyed, appreciate a like or comment to the video. Don't be sheepish, people. I'll catch you all next time in part four. Bye!